My mother asked me to help in a garden and plant trees and stuff like that to be interested in garden work. I wasn't interested in garden work. I did it because she asked me to do it. And uh, in the greenhouse, uh, the mystery of the soil and what kind of chemical you put in there and what is good and what is bad and the reaction of, of one chemical to another became very interesting to me. So when I uh, went to Berkeley, I studied the soil science because they had no floriculture course. Later on, when I heard that uh, there was a floriculture college in Ohio State, so then I went to Ohio State University and uh, I fell into a thing that fell right into my lap. All the students were floriculturists, they were all talking flowers, and I got interested because many of them invited me to their home to see the farm. So it was an education for me. But I, I couldn't get a college degree because I was changing my courses so much I didn't major in anything. My plan was I wanted to learn the subject matter uh, about how to grow flowers and do the flower business. That was my most important thing. It was, it opened up my future. I figured I'm not gonna be a, just a small flower grower. I'm gonna be a big flower grower. So I did study chess quite a bit. I played chess in a, in a scientific way. Well, the strategy in chess, uh, where you figure your offense and defense and, and all your uh, structure of the game, I applied it into my business. It's very much uh, like chess. So the thinking uh, ability to put your chess game in a strategic uh, position so that you, you could figure out what your strength and your weakness is. It is the same thing in the business. Chess is uh, much like it. I can still remember as we were in the flower uh, market that uh, Shimmy's flower stall was right across from us. Uh, and I always used to marvel at uh, the way he was running his business. And my father one day told me that we should really, I, I personally and myself and my brother should be really looking at what Shimmy's doing all the time to learn from him as a, as a model. And I think I took that to heart from the very start. And Shimmy, I kind of thank you for being a role model and uh, being a teacher and being a good friend and sharing a lot of the things that really competitors do will not share in other industries. Before I met Shimmy, the flower industry was very disorganized. What, what we really needed was some kind of cooperation among growers. And the only person that could foresee that need was Shimmy Shibata. Shimmy is so far ahead of any other rose growing organizations, any other growers, large growers. Shimmy was so far ahead of them, they were not in it even. In business, for me, has been intellectual. There is an emotional side of the business, which I know. Flowers don't grow very good in the greenhouse, I get upset. I have employees that don't do what I want them to do, and this unnerves me. So there's an emotional side in which you have to uh, contend with. When it got to the point where I could not put up with all these problems, for the simple thing, I could not sleep anymore. So with this, I physically broke down. Uh, his doctor called me in and said, you know, your husband is under a lot of strain and I really think that it would be helpful if he uh, saw a psychiatrist. And that kind of took me back and I said, oh, I don't think he'll have time to be going to a psychiatrist. And he said, well, it's either that or it'll be his health. He's got to learn to relax more and, and take care of himself. 
So he was all intellectual. He, he was brilliant in what he did. But emotionally, he had a, a lot of difficulties growing up, and that had to be brought out and looked at, which he was finally able to do. So he became a happier man. He, he, was, he opened up a whole new world for him. And it's from then on that all this expansion started. Now it freed him to think much more clearly and created a whole new industry in Salinas. And it became, Salinas became the largest flower center, growing center in the United States. This is when I really saw um, an amazing man who was able to do so much. One of the things that I think you've taught a lot of people is to create a team, take the input of the team, and run with unanimity out there on, on the horizon. And we've gone through a lot of turmoil, and but I'll always remember is include all your people in decision making. And I think that you, as a visionary, has taught that to many people. And I, would, for one, want to say very much thank you. But the wisdom that you and John Hanford had back in those days, and gelling that with the fund of the trade fair, we got a few things going. It was a real good waypoint for the Wolf's organization too, Shimmy. You basically saved an organization that was broke at that time, as you know. My relationship with you and your actually mentoring me in the business was worth a college degree. And I say that in all sincerity. In that one and a half years, the time I spent with you and, the, and all that you knew about flower production, growing, shipping, and handling, marketing, distribution, and, and greenhouse design and consideration, flow, material flow, of site selection and, and all of the intricacies that go in to getting something started from scratch to its fulfillment, you gave me that kind of training and that kind of input. I could never have gotten that in any college course. I don't care where it would be. So I want to thank you. I mean, take this opportunity and thank you truly, really, how much I appreciate what, what you've done for us. But I remember one thing that you told me uh, growing up was that um, you know doing well in school is is fine. You know that's a good thing. You don't want to do us want us to do badly in school. But more than anything else, you wanted us to understand the people we're living with and get a better sense of community and um, you know what makes the kind of the world at large tick. The greenhouse was probably the place where dad seemed to be the most at home. And the thing that I learned from him is that sometimes it is not the knowledge of knowing what is the right thing to do. It is being able to read things on the fly and making decisions and making corrections, you know, as you're moving along to continually be aware of what are the changes going on and then you make your little adjustments as you go along and, and sometimes you know, the best decision is to make no decision, you wait and so then other times you go ahead and you go forward. Growing up I would hear these things and I, would, I didn't really understand but when I started working with them and I started going through situations, you know, emergencies that would hit the company or the business I began to realize this is what he's talking about. I have learned in life, in my life, from this, that if you don't see where this is coming, you're going to get cut in half. This candle made my life. I am what I am because of this. My father wanted me to be like a Japanese samurai. 
the Japanese samurai, you never quiver, you never give up, you, you don't run away. You aggress, aggress, aggress. And if you don't aggress the right way, you get knocked out of the place. My life, personally, in my world of business and everything, follow after this, like the samurai. a lot of samurai thinking also. Not that you give in ever, but that you know when to bend and when to come back. It is like the way Shimmy played Kendo. He let his bigger opponent attack him first and then came at him with all of his energy. Shimmy's had to do that all of his life. My, the impact on my life and the way that my dad molded me wasn't by the force of his imposing his personality. He lets people be who they are. So the way that he had an impact on my life was watching him and the force of his character dealing with life. You see the elegance of his character. And so the way that he, he has molded many of us is not by forcing us, not by leveraging us. It's we see how he conducts himself in life. And we want to we want to do that too. Green and red roses too. I watch them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Such an accommodating big brother, the, the perfect Onisan. But then you were always there for me. And you've always been an inspiration for me all of my life as well, and always will be. My wish is that you'll continue to be a part of our lives many, many more years to come. Happy birthday, Shimmy. Omedeto. So pretty in the sky, also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking and singing, how do you do? They really say, I, I love you. I hear babies cry and I watch them go. They'll learn much more than we'll know and I think to myself. Dreams that you did.
YouTube.